So if we have to deal with a positive rational index, so like a half, a quarter, a third, three halves, two thirds, okay, so a fraction, then what we're going to be utilising in the majority of cases is this bit here, okay? This 1 over p is p, the pth root of x. So x to the 1 over p, sorry, is the pth root of x. Now, you'll notice that not in every case will we have 1 over a value, okay? So we're going to have to use a little bit of ingenuity in order to get around that problem. So if we just start with 36 to the half, what that represents is 36, well, the square root of 36, so the second root of 36. Now, we don't ordinarily write that too, so let's get rid of that. Okay, so the square root of 36 is 6. Now, don't be thinking here that it is plus or minus 6, okay? Here, because I have already written it down, 36 to the half, in order to identify whether this would be positive or negative, I would already have had to have chosen whether it was positive or negative whether I was taking the positive or negative square root, okay? So if I just write down the square root of 36 like that, okay, all that means is the positive root, the positive square root of 36, not the negative. It's different to me saying x squared is 36, and then I have to square root both sides, and that then appears the plus minus. OK, that's a different problem. If I write down the square root of 36 on paper or on the whiteboard, then that I am meaning the positive square root. OK. Right, so let's have a look at number 2, 81 to the quarter. So this is representing the fourth root of 81, and that is 3. 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 is 81. Now, if I've got a fraction to the power of a fraction, like this, 1 8th to the 1 third, that is the cube root of 1 over 8. So cube root, the numerator, so the cube root of 1 is 1, and the cube root of 8 is 2. So the cube root of 1 8th is a half. Now we start to get a little bit more fiddly because we've got the three halves, okay? We don't have a fraction of the form 1 over p now. So, you've got two choices, okay? Because it's all coming down to this rule here. The three halves you can either write as 3 times a half or half times 3, okay? So let's write that down, 25 to the 3 times a half, or you could write it as 25 to the half times 3. Now the reason why I'm saying that there are these two ways of writing it down is because you could either consider this like that, or you could consider it like that. And really you've got to decide for yourself which is the easier to work with. 25 cubed, and then square root it, or square root the 25, and then cube what you get. Of the two, to do in my head, certainly, this will always be the easiest one to work with, rather than that one. I don't know what 25 cubed is off the top of my head, and then I'd have to square root that large number. That seems like an awful lot more work than just dealing with this. So if I do the square root first, I know that the square root of 25 is 5. So this is 5 cubed. So you can see I'm already going from 25 to the half to 5. I'm not bothering with writing it down as a square root of 25 anymore. I now identify that that's the square root. So square root the 25, I get 5. 5 cubed is 125. Okay? 
So from before, I would have had to have known that the square root of that number was 125, okay? which would have been more challenging. So really, you want to do that root first before you go ahead and uh, cube or to the power of 4, to the power of 5, or something like that, OK? So when I'm dealing with this problem, it makes sense to think about it as 8 over 27 uh, cubed, uh, sorry, cube rooted first, and then, actually, I'll best put that in a separate bracket, and then deal with the squared. So a third times a third times 2. So if I cube root the numerator and the denominator, I'm going to get 2 over 3, and I still have to square it. Okay, I've still got that 2 on the outside. So I square the numerator, and I square the denominator. So 8 over 27 to the 2 thirds is actually just 4 ninths. Okay? So in general, I would deal with the root first and then deal with the um, integer. Okay? It'd be a lot easier uh, working it through that way. So in the next video, We'll mix it up, go through a couple of examples where we've got negative rational indices.